Max from Woodsman's Finest. Welcome to another episode in the um, Carving Axe series. Today we're talking about another axe by Landwerke Forge from Denmark. Um, this is going to be a quite interesting look at a very very special axe. So quite a while ago while I was still in Canada, by the way um, this video is filmed in Upper Austria in Gmunden in my hometown. I'm back from, from Canada and I'm back to my hometown so the ambient looks a little bit different um, and I'm a little bit in the middle um, of, of a town again, not, not really a big town um, and there's a beautiful lake over there and a lot of mountains and um, we really have a nice winter but it's a different location um, anyways. So um, that's just um, on the side. So we're talking about the fin today. This is a very interesting model that I um, got sent by Hans-Peter Knudsen um, from Landwerke Forge in Denmark as I said and this is gonna be a very very interesting axe we're gonna look at. Um, just overall as far as shape goes you can tell that we're having here a rather compact smaller hatchet style um, that is very reminiscent of two different styles in my personal humble opinion um, on one side we have something a little bit along the lines of a Hudson Bay pattern um, or trade axe or even tomahawk if you if you will on the other hand we have a lot of different influences of course um, Hans Peter being from Denmark the so to say home town home area of, of, of the, the north the Norsemen or the Vikings we have a lot of Nordic influence let's call it we have a very roomy beard down here um, and you're seeing that hopefully in the, the detail shots and pictures and photography I've done um, we have a very roomy beard we don't have a lot of upswept toe as I find it on a lot of my other carving axes um, but we have a drop down here and a little bit of a point um, and we have a very nice and pronounced pole on the other hand on the other side so we have a beautiful counterweight on one hand and we also have a tool here on the other hand that comes in very handy so when Hans Peter sent me this axe here he said he had something a little bit different in mind and I absolutely agree with him so we're having here a little bit of a mix and what's so inter interesting about that for me is that we, we're having a hatchet that we can do a lot of our crafting chores with. I'm not only talking about spoon carving because here I have a hatchet that I would love to go ahead and just shape a piece of a boat or ship with. Um, so we have the craft side on one hand and on the other hand we have a lot of features and a lot of details about this hatchet that makes it amazing to carry it to the woods um, just just have it on you on, on one side it's rather light on the other side we have a very interesting grind um, the grind on here is something I, I, I've been paying attention to very recently and it's quite interesting so not only, and I hope you see that in the detailed shots then more than I'm trying to, to put in right here. On one hand we're having a rather high convex grind on the X head. And I hope you folks can see that. We're having a rather high convex grind And what you, can see, what you can see here, very interestingly, it looks a little bit like the grind up here is a lot shorter and down here as well than in the middle. So it just looks narrower and wider in the middle. So the reason for that is a quite interesting feature about the whole construction of the bit of this axe. Um, as you can see hopefully and also in the detail shot, we have a lot of weight here and a lot of meat in the eye, which I like a lot because it always gives a lot of nice counterweight to the material here in a bit and I'm really careful touching this axe right now because I polished this thing and sharpened it up to something that puts my knives to shame. So we're having a lot of meat around the eye here and in the pole. Then we have this beautiful taper and again I'm referring to my pictures. Um, beautiful taper down and then 
a very interesting part then when it comes to the bit itself it is not straight like this um, you find a, on a lot of Swedish axes if you look at your Grand's Force or something if you're aiming down the axe from the front looking directly at the bit you're gonna see that they're absolutely parallel so there is two parallel cheeks going straight down when you look at the axe from the front this axe here and a lot of very very efficient felling axes that don't get stuck in the wood but rather chip out stuff now if I look down this axe from the front I can tell that from the toe to the heel down here basically the cheeks are convex so they're not only convex when it comes to the grind down here but they're also convex from up here to down here that's why the grind looks higher in the middle than it, but it's all the same bevel at uh, the same angle of the bevel that's a very very interesting detail and I really love that about this axe I gotta be fair when I got this axe um, I was not really sure what to, in what category to put it um, it's so many things um, it's a great carving axe it is a great great hatchet for bushcraft whatever that means for me it means that I take the right thing considering the weight the quality and my ability to maintain it when I go outside um, in order to produce a craft what I need to comfortably be there it's not a survival kind of idea for me it is I want to be part of the circle out there and craft and produce what I need in order to be able to do that that's bushcraft for me and this thing is is really coming in handy because because the way the way this is distributed in the bit here is so efficient and that brings me to the next story when I got this axe I used it with the handle that was on it for a while trying to understand this accent a little bit more and although it sounds maybe really nerdy um, I took the handle off that I used it with for a while and put ever since two more handles on the first handle I made for it was something along the lines of a still packable two-handed all-purpose axe maybe comparable a little bit to the small forest axe by Grants Fuss Brooks and that was exactly the size that I made the handle in the length and I took it on a six-day bush um, um, canoe trip up into Magami in northern Ontario and I gotta say it, it was amazingly efficient I was like I was felling and bucking with it for a while, limbing, especially the bucking. I didn't know what it was, but it was so efficient. It was more efficient than my um, small for, um, forest axe by Grants Force Brooks, although this axe is lighter. And then recently I realized the reason why it was so efficient was not only the high convex grind, but it was also those convex cheeks this one has that makes it still bite in very well, but it's, uh, it, does, it does throw chips instead of getting stuck um, and sticking in the wood um, another um, detail about the axe a very important detail this axe is laminated as all of Landwerke Forge Hans Peters um, axes from Denmark they all have a mild steel head with a forge welded spring steel edge and it comes back two inches to about here so there's no way you ever gonna run out of steel and there's also no risk whatsoever of anything delaminating in case in, in fact I actually shot a couple of macro pictures that I'm gonna insert here where you can actually see the beautiful lamination line you get on here it's stunning so now I'm on my third handle on this thing and this handle actually makes me stoke the most. I actually went ahead and did something I haven't done with a hatchet like this ever. I put a nearly completely straight handle on this one from Austrian Ash. Very very tough, in fact the toughest wood I've ever carved. 
um, and I love this. I love the feel of this. Um, it rides perfectly on my gear belt here in my my loop. Um, it feels perfect in hand. It has this nice swell at the end. Um, it has the feeling. I don't, it, it might sound a little bit silly at this point, but it has a very martial feel to it. I can absolutely see um, how this, in this moment, nearly feels like a weapon that I have it on a straight handle like this. So I haven't done this to any of my carving axes with a straight handle, but I have to say that there is something to a straight handle that a curved handle would make things sometimes a little bit more instable or unstable in a way. Um, and a straight handle has a very, very crude and direct translation of, of leverage, um, if that makes any sense. Just because we're having nearly a 90 degree angle here, um, it feels very, very comfortable in every position. And um, in fact, they're going to use this now to carve a handle for another axe that, axe set that is still wa waiting for me. So um, we're doing a couple of different chores and this is not a destruction test or anything stupid like that. This is what um, I think this axe is really, really good at. We're going to do a little bit of kindling, just a little bit of small splitting of firewood because this is not a felling axe or anything. But again, this on a longer handle performed absolutely beautifully as a two-handed axe um, outside in the, in the Ontario bush. Um, so already, I want to already take this away. Um, at this point there's an absolute recommendation for me if you want one axe that you're taking to all kind of different chores and places the Finn by Landwerke Forge is an absolute winner um, one more detail shot I want to give you at this point here already that where we're talking a little bit of ge about geometry because we don't have a lot of upswept bit, he um, bit here, if I'm taking the middle line from the pole 90 degrees down to the, to the edge, this is a very important proportional um, aspect that I'm always looking at, nearly kind of a secret. So I'm always taking the 90 degree um, line here and we're actually hitting the upper, the upper corner of the, of the the beard. Because of that, I wouldn't even choke up all the way here on this rounded and rather comfortable pole for push cuts or anything like that. I'm actually very, very comfortable gripping where I have this little step here, this this little corner, and gripping like this. I feel like I could easily use this axe with this beautiful bevel as a kind of a cleaning up chisel. For, for all kind of chores, not only for spoon carving, but as well for cleaning up joints or, or whatnot. And um, this design makes it extremely comfortable to choke all the way up on this, on this piece. So um, with these words, um, I just want to take it to the next step. And get her used a little bit.